So this trip of a lifetime was booked and it was for your parents' joint 60th birthday. You're going yeah. to Dubai and then to Singapore. So this should have been a lovely family experience mm -hmm. for all of you. And you did all the right things, as you said yep. just a moment ago. When you booked your tickets, you told the airline Emirates straight away that this was your situation. Yep. And what did they advise you? They just kept telling us to tell the crew stuff. And when we got on board, we told them as well, they go sit down, send somebody over. Next thing you know, we're all seated up. The menus have come round. Because I wasn't eating anyway, yeah. I'd got, we brought our own food. So put and the you menus. were asked when you got on board whether or not you brought your own yeah. food, yes. weren't yep. you? But um, prior to even booking the holiday through our travel agents, we let them know um, a couple of days before we called Emirates just to confirm, OK, have you got our details? And that's when they confirm, mm. yes, we've got all your details. You couldn't have done more. No. I've, got, I've got a statement here, which I will read in full at the end of the interview, but part of that statement says we've... And this is from Emirates. We've looked into Ms Hota's booking and our records do not reflect any mention of a nut allergy. Mm. That is strange. Reason being, cos we had two vegetarian options as well and they were perfectly fine. And that's so when we gave the information in regards to me and my brother that's got the nut allergy. They we did. also told them that my mum and my sister are vegetarians. So they've got that information because they've got the vegetarian meals on board, mm. but they haven't So got you maintain you told them multiple yeah. Yes. Our travel yes. agent has also confirmed that in an email as well to say they've passed on that information. They had done. Right. Mm -hmm. So how did... Because you, you saw the menu and there was a meal on there that had cashew nuts yes. in yeah. it. So immediately you're like, right, I need to tell somebody. Mm -hmm. And you were calling for 15 yeah. minutes. Yes. By this point, the, air, if the flight's the, yeah. taken off and yeah. you're in the air. So when you eventually did get some assistance, what did they say to you? They came up to us. Um, I think it must have been the supervisor and one of her colleagues, and she said, what's, what's the problem? I explained that, you know, there's nuts in the menu, but we've told yourself. And their reaction was, have you got your medication? Have you got your own food? I go, we've got that. The issue is there's going to be nuts surrounding us. us. Yeah. Mm. And they didn't quite understand what the severe reality of it was. They seem to think, was. even though that we're not eating it, it's not going to affect us, but which... It can affect yeah. us. It yeah. has affected us. Uh, because there, was ca there were cashews on one of yes. the uh, yeah. um, menu selections. There was I think it was a chicken biryani dinner. Right. Yeah. And there was cashew nuts in there, fried cashew nuts. Now, you, if you had eaten that, obviously you would have had your severe reaction. Yes. But it the mere fact shock. that it was close to you, another passenger could have eaten it, that would have affected yes, you as well. Yes, there was 500 passengers on board. So, out of all of them, they've all had their dinner. So, there was 500 passengers Yeah, so you, really you don't know what's going to... It's going around, isn't it? So, yeah, so what yeah. do you do? I mean, you can't get off. You're in the no. middle of the air. So what did they suggest to you? Uh, I was quite surprised. What they suggested was that they'll give us the uh, pillows and blankets and we sit in the toilets for seven and a half hours for the whole journey of the flight. Well, wow. there's no seat belts. So no, I can't imagine that safety. airline regulations would allow you, if there was turbulence, to be That's in a toilet. That's what we raised with them, exactly. the safety issue. Yeah. And from their point of view, I think they were just trying to come up with a solution. And... This did say you can go upstairs, but the, <clears throat> the other member of staff said, actually, there's more nuts upstairs. Because they normally serve the nuts with the yeah. drinks. So you ended oh, up... They found a, a, an empty seat. Yeah, the other yes. solution, what they said, is we've got uh, two banks empty at the back. This is normally the, for the crew, but on this occasion... We'll let you sit at the back if here. you want. Yeah. Which is what you did. So yeah. you, you land, you have your holiday. Uh, unbelievably, when you return... Once again, there was no mention on any system that you'd no. rung up to say about nuts. So, yeah. thank God this time the flight didn't have any nuts on it yeah. and mm -hmm. you were OK. But it's extraordinary that you've been through this one time, complaint, and then the same thing happens on the return it's, journey. Yeah. Exactly. From the four flights we did catch, it was only one flight they actually knew about. That was from Dubai to Singapore. And I must say, they actually made precautions for us to sit at the front. The member of staff actually greeted us before we got on, you're the allergy person. they were like, yeah, we are. Mm. Yeah. And they said... If so they th can do it? Yeah, they can yes, do it. they can. They, do can. It. they said if there's any problems or anything, you know, let them know. And where we were sitting, it was literally right in front of them. Yeah. So if, you know, we, we did start feeling not so good. So would you like to see a total ban uh, of nuts on planes? I think ideally we would, but I think it's going to be hard to put a total ban in place the other thing what I'd like to do is, obviously on flights, maybe separate an area if there is some kind of allergies for people like us. The trouble is with a separate area, if you have a nut-born allergy, if you have a nut-born allergy uh, to, to nuts, they air on a plane, those 500 <coughs> people all breathing in the same area, it goes yeah, round and round yeah. and round. So you can't have an air, you can have an area where you won't touch them, but uh, not necessarily yeah. an area where you wouldn't breathe them. Well, the fortunate thing about nut allergies, even though it's the most common type, one of the most common type of food allergies that there are, it affects, nut allergy specifically affects about one in 
two in 100 children, but one in 200 adults. Problem with it is it tends to be the one that causes severe symptoms and the, in worst case scenario, anaphylaxis, which mm -hmm. is life threatening. Now, the thing about the, the fortunate thing is that actually for those nuts to become airborne and then someone to react to them is actually relatively rare. So just because you've got a nut allergy doesn't mean you're going to react to airborne particles. There's a proportion of people will do, but the risk is there. And what you don't want to do is have an anaphylactic reaction at 30,000 feet. Mm. And that's why I agree that nuts are not an essential part of our diet. Yeah. We can do without them. Therefore, well, I don't, think we, should, plane to I don't do think we should be taking the risk necessarily. So in my opinion, rather than separating people out, because some people may react to airborne particles, some people may actually react to touching the tray table that might have a trace of nut on it. Right. Um, in my opinion, we should just get rid of them altogether because they're not a necessity. Mm -hmm. And actually, the risks of having them on there probably vastly outweigh our need to have them as a snack.